Hi guys, Rex here, and I'm going to be showing you how to make my version of Ninja Smoke Bombs. <clears throat> the first things that you're going to want to need is some Spectricide Stump Remover and regular old sugar. And what you want to do with those is you want to cook them in a standard house pan. You can get this at the dollar store or, or somewhere. And what you want to do is you want to cook it on very, very low heat. I'm talking like pra like practically off. Like very, very low heat. And what you do is you cook that together and you, you, know, you stir it up and you shake it. And then eventually it should caramelize the sugar. And you're going to get this awesome little like, like, like powder pellet looking thing. You know, mine I've broken up and made a couple bombs with already, you know, but it's, it turns this really fine stuff. All right. And eventually I'm going to be using this small little piece right here for my smoke bomb today. The second thing that you're going to need, <clears throat> excuse me. The second thing that you're going to need is a pack of Party Pops. You can get these at any fireworks store. They're probably like 50 cents. Um, if you go to the TNT shops here in New England, uh, they're buy one, get one free. So you can get a, a bunch of those for a couple bucks. Um, the next thing that you're going to need is you can go to your local hobby store. And this is a model rocket engine. These are about five, anywhere from five to nine dollars, and I used the black powder on the inside of this for the rocket fuel to uh, really give the uh, smoke bomb some kick, so that way you can have enough energy to set off my my spectricide and my granulated sugar. Now, to explain something, this reason why I use the stump remover is because it has potassium nitrate in it. And it's almost 100% potassium nitrate, and that's the chemical that we need to make the smoke bomb. The next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need one of these little flint fire starters. Um, you can get them at almost any sporting goods store of any kind. Um, you use these to spark, a fly, um, spark fires for, you know, like campfires and stuff. Um, and what you do with this is you use any file, you can get this at any hardware store for like a buck, um, depending on where you go. I spent like four on mine. Um, and what you do is you grind it along there and you get the magnesium powder or the, uh, the flint powder out of this to use for the smoke bomb. It's the, um, it's the trigger basically. So you're... Not the trigger, I should say. It's actually the um, the fuel. So between the powder that you grind off of this and the powder you get off the rocket engine, those should be should spontaneously combust once you throw the poppets. Okay. So the poppets set off the powder from these two, which thus set this on fire, which causes the smoke. Now, the uh, next thing that you're going to need is some sort of tape. You can either use electrical tape, duct tape, masking tape. doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to need some sort of napkins or paper towels. I have real paper towels here just in case. <laughs> and also pennies. Now, I've seen a lot of other videos where people use pennies for making, you know, smoke bombs using, or j just flash bombs using, you know, um... But, you know, the, the, the penny bombs that you see seen all over YouTube where, you know, people are, you know, using pennies and they use uh, these little, uh, these little poppers like gun, like cap gun caps and stuff. I, I tried using that and I didn't like it very much. I, I didn't find it to be very effective for this exact um, project. So... Basically, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we are going to need to take apart the poppets and put them into the paper towel. So let's get started with Okay, so see now, here I've gotten about four or five of the poppets unwrapped. Literally, you just take each one of the individual poppers out, and you want to get this little, little white tip off of it here. 
and then you should be able to pour the little pebbles <clears throat> inside the rock, inside the packaging, onto the paper towel or the napkin, depending on what you're using. See now the next part that I'm going to do. I recommend using a notebook with a spare sheet of paper, and I'm going to go grab that now, and we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, see, now I'm going to be filing off the magnesium powder or whatever the flint powder is off of this. Now, you got to be really careful and make sure to go slow when you're doing this. Uh, really, like, do it slow and deep. Otherwise, if you go too fast... If you go too fast, it sparks up like that. You don't want to do that. You want to do nice, long, hard strokes. You know, very. Just make sure to do it really slow, so that way you don't, you don't, you don't spark up your powder too much, and you'll be able to get a better reaction from the powder. So now, after you do that for about maybe five, ten minutes, you should get. See that little bit of powder that just came off there? You gotta do that maybe for five or ten minutes to get the amount of powder that you need. It only takes, you know, you know I'm doing a small bomb right now to show you guys, so I'm only gonna do a little quick one. So I'm gonna hurry up and finish this off so we can get to the next. Alright, see so now I've already got on my black powder from scraping off my flint stick. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna set this one aside right now, keep it away from the workstation. See so, you now the next part that you need to do is you need to is uh, use your rocket engine that I got. All right, like I said, it's just a standard rocket engine. You can get it at any hobby store. There's um, the top layer which is white, the bottom layer which is white, and then you got this little mini, mini inner core here. The inner core is the actual engine fuel. That's what you want to use when doing your ninja smoke bomb. So I don't have the time to uh, show you guys me cutting up a new one of of the rocket engine but like I said there's there's three points uh, three parts of each engine you got two whites one at the top one at the bottom and then you get the black core see there's white he's white now after you cut open your engine you can use a pair of scissors or a knife you know a knife or box cutter you should be able to find this little black core here okay and the black core is you know at first it's like cylindrical like the rest of it and you, what you want to do is the same process that you did for the um, the grinding of the flint powder. It's like, you know, like I said, just long, you know, kind of smooth strokes to, you know, get the powder. Now, this stuff breaks apart a lot easier, and you can go faster with it, and you don't have to worry too much about igniting it or anything. Just get it, all that going right there. See, now that you did, did that for a little while, you should be able to take this and then you get, a, get, get your black powder off of that. Um, you want to do that for like, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute or so until you get enough black powder as you had over here in your original pile. So I'm going to work on that for a second. All right, now this is the rocket engine powder and now we have two piles one for the rocket engine powder and one from the flint powder and what I generally do with this is I'll mix it in some sort of bowl or cup that I don't that I'm not using at the moment see here I got a nice white dry cup and what you do is first you take your flint powder and you get that in the cup okay try to get as, as much as possible there okay and next you do the rocket engine powder you're gonna get that in there right there get all that all that in there okay See, now that we have that, we have this little mixture, we give a little bit of a stir. You know, get it all nice and mixed up. All right. And now comes the easy parts. Okay. See, now the final things that you want to do is you want to take your powder and ever so gently put it on top of the rocks 
in the pile. Make sure the rock make sure the rocks are you know really centered first. <clears throat> make sure that you know they have a nice tightness to the to the vicinity of them. All right, now you want to get your powder. And just tap it on. There you go. All right, there's the rest of them. Now make sure you rinse your bowls really good after you're done. You don't need any excess residues. I'm going to put a little bit of soap in there. <clears throat> now, okay, see so now you want to... And now that we got that, the next part is this, uh, one of the most simple. Literally, you take your potassium nitrate sugar mix that we cooked up earlier and we, you know, hardened... Place it directly on top of the pile. And now comes the easy part. Right, now here's the easy part. The easy part is you get a second napkin that's the same size as your mix. Place a penny in the center. Now the reason why I put a penny in the center is because the penny acts as a flat surface. Now sometimes I've noticed in other videos they don't have a flat surface in their videos and I figured that using a penny kind of like the penny bomb videos gives a guaranteed hard surface in between because what I've noticed is that if you don't make your smoke bomb wicked wicked tight in other videos when it hits the cement or the ground it wouldn't go off and it would just kind of fall apart having a flat penny as a secondary layer should guarantee an ignition every time. So now you line your penny up ever so perfectly with your mix, just like so. Make sure that's dead center. And now we just got to give it a wrap. Now we just got to wrap it up. So you, what you want to do is pull it from all four corners, and you want to pull them up like that. And then you want to take the other two corners, pull them up like that. And I'll show you the end result, okay? All right. <clears throat> now, I've used electrical tape with mine. You can see how it's nice and flat right there. And it's because the pennies was used. Now, when you're tightening this, make sure you want to tighten it around the edge right here. You don't want to tighten it from the bottom because otherwise the bomb will go off in your hand. You want to make sure to give it nice little tight squeezes. Um, I made sure to spin it around kind of like the original popper did. You can see the little tail there. And uh, let's go outside and see how this works. Okay. okay. So this is Trish. Why are you so close? I feel like I'm gonna blow don't you up. Don't worry about it. Don't, no, 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 just toss it that way. Okay. That way. That way. Yeah. Okay. So this is Trish, and this is the smoke bomb that I made her. So just throw it. This feels like Back to the Future. Just do it. What? <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> that was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> and that's the smoke bomb.